Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are prepping for a fun summer game night with the family while simultaneously acknowledging a few of their birthdays. I'd like to thank Warren Sai for sponsoring today's video and sending us everything we needed to throw an amazing shark party. Warren Sai has an Amazon shop where they have supplies for many different themed parties, some of which you can see on this box. If any of them catch your eye, make sure to check out their shop when planning your next party. So in this box, we are provided like a happy birthday sign, tablecloths, and plasticware, cups, balloons, paper plates, and napkins. They're all really cute and they feature, I believe, six different sharks. And I especially really like the one that has the little party hat. So let's go ahead and start by assembling this happy birthday sign. Something that I really liked about it was that the letters were already strung on the string. I have gotten other packs before where like you literally had to string everything yourself. So this definitely saved some time. The only pieces that weren't attached were the pieces that would have made the sign too big to fit in the box. So what you do is you take the little metal pieces that they provide you in the kit and stick it through the holes after aligning these extra pieces to the um, designated pieces on the happy birthday sign. You put the little metal piece through the hole and then peel the prongs in opposite directions to secure the attachment to the sign. After hanging up the sign uh, it, using the little hooks near my kitchen sink, I noticed that one of the pieces was a little top heavy. So all I did was tape a nickel to the bottom of one of the letters and that weighted it down enough so that the sign looked as it should. I think if you were to hang this like up on a wall, you obviously wouldn't need to weight it down, but where I was hanging it, there was enough space between my hanging clips and the wall where I needed an additional weight. Okay, next up we are going to take out these drawstring backpacks. I was gonna be using these as goodie bags and this is a separate from the sign and kind of dinnerware. In the Amazon shop, they also have some paper bags that you could use for gift bags, but I just kind of like the versatility of this and how these backpacks can be reused by the kids whenever they want. Another cute product that they have fitting the shark theme is a pin the teeth on the shark game. It comes with some little stickers. It's a little hard to see, probably to attach the poster to your wall or your sliding door, which is what I'm gonna be doing. It also comes with a little face mask, which is nice because you know, not always, you don't always have something on hand that will nicely cover the eyes of the kids. And then the mouths that they offer, there's four different kind. One has like braces, one has like a little fish in it, one sticking out its tongue, and then one just kind of looks like jaws. And they're all just really cute. And here I'm just kind of testing, uh, you know, the stickiness of the stickers when carefully pulled off, you can pull it off without damaging both the sticker or the poster. So you might be able to get multiple uses out of this. It just kind of depends on how hard the mouths were stuck on the poster and how gently you peel them off. So moving on, we are gonna be making some vanilla cake. This is a recipe that I've made plenty of times on my channel, so I will try to either link a video that shares the recipe or put the recipe in the description box. But my thought for this cupcake was I wanted to make like a blue cupcake. I probably should have added a little bit more blue food coloring looking back to the batter, but oh well but I wanted it to be like blood in the water cupcakes. So in addition to making this vanilla cake and dyeing it blue like water, I chopped up some strawberries, you know, days before, 
fed the scraps to my chickens and sprinkled some sugar on them so that the next like day or two they would produce like a strawberry syrup and then these chopped strawberries were going to be inserted in the center of our cupcakes so I just kind of thought that would be fun. And then I decided to try for the very first time a new frosting recipe, which I will get to in a bit. So again, these scraps were fed to our chickens and these strawberries produced an amazing sweet syrup. And after I punched the little holes in the cupcakes, I filled them in with these little strawberry chunks and we moved on to a Swiss meringue buttercream, which is, this was again, the first time I've ever made this. It's been on my bucket list. I will be saving the yolks from these eggs that I had to use to probably make some Plotzek, which I will link that video up above. It's a delicious Polish sweet bread. But with these egg whites, you mix in some sugar and then whisk it over some simmering water until it reaches 160 degrees Fahrenheit or until I think you dip your finger in and you can't fill any sugar granules. Once you get to that point, you're gonna beat this until you get stiff peaks. Uh, I did stop kind of halfway to wipe down the sides and then uh, continued to beat it until it was nice and stiff. And then what you do is take some, you know, room temperature butter and just feed it in a tablespoon at a time until you get your frosting consistency. Magic. No, I'm 
Once we got to this stage, it was time to add our flavoring. So I just did some vanilla, but I'm sure you can do, you know, other, you know, peppermint or whatever other flavorings you want. And then what I did was I wanted to do like a kind of swirl, imagine like the different shades of blue in a crashing wave. So you have the white foam and then it prog gets progressively darker. So I added some blue to the frosting rolled it in some saran wrap, and then dropped this in a piping bag to pipe onto my cupcakes. And I gotta say, the overall look and like texture as I was piping it, I was so excited because it just looks so smooth and creamy and just like really beautiful. I imagine decorating a cake with this type of frosting would be just really beautiful. But I do have to admit that I think I prefer just American buttercreams better. Uh, it's the one I've made in the past multiple times where you just beat butter until it becomes like almost white and you add in powdered sugar and then you're flavoring. And if you're doing chocolate, you would add in cocoa powder as well. It ends up being a little bit more, not it's not really grainy, but it's more grainy than the Swiss meringue buttercream. But the flavor, I don't know, there's just something about it that made it better in my opinion. And that's probably because I have a sweet tooth. This buttercream, again, was very smooth. My sister said it reminded her of like kind of store-bought, not store-bought frosting, but like if you get a cupcake at a store, kind of like that kind of texture and the flavor isn't as sweet as a typical American buttercream. So I don't know, our family, it wasn't a hit, which in some ways is a win for me because I don't have to do as many steps when making frosting in the future. But at the same time, I was disappointed that it wasn't at least as good in our opinion as the American buttercream because I really loved how smooth it was and how beautiful it looked when it was piped out. So all this to say, unless I you know, give chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream a try in the future, I don't think I will be making this again, simply because it just has so many additional steps. Not so many, but it has additional steps and you know, I, the other one, in our opinion, tastes better. The day of the party, I will be putting on some little cake toppers, which come in the set on the store. So they have like a bunch of different little sharks. And again, my favorite is the one wearing the party hat, but those will be put on the day of the party. Moving on, we're gonna make some little aquariums using some blue jello. I got these little containers from the Dollar Tree and I saw like a variety of ways to make these. Looking back, I have to be honest, I probably wouldn't make this again, or at least in the same technique. And I'll explain in a bit. But the overall look was cute and it definitely fit the theme. So after I sprinkled the Skittles at the bottom of the containers, I made a pack of blue jello, just kind of following the instructions on the back of the box, and then filled the containers with this mixture. I did have to use two boxes of jello to fill out 10 of these plastic cups. Uh -oh. 
Then I let the jello set in the fridge. And the next day I cut a little bit of the jello and, or like stuck a knife in the jello and then shoved a Swedish fish into the jello so that it looked like a little fish was swimming around the aquarium. And with the best, you know, with the right lighting, it was definitely, you know, a cute little design. Although you can see what's funny is the Skittles started to dissolve because of the liquid. And then the little S's on the Skittles floated to the top. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, you know, definitely I wasn't expecting that. But it does kind of give like a, as you get deeper in the water, it gets darker, you know, kind of look. And then what I'm doing here is just kind of scratching the top to give it a more bubbly look. So I almost forgot to mention that this jello, it really had to be consumed like as quickly as possible because when left for too long, everything started to disintegrate and just liquefy. Like the Swedish fish was like, I don't know, it was, it was kind of gross um, after like a day or two because we had a couple extra. And like when I had it, like all of my Skittles were just liquid. I, I didn't even get anything chewy. So I, like I said, I, it was yummy. People definitely enjoyed it because it was very sweet. But I would say like as soon as these are solidified, like you want to enjoy them. Otherwise it just kind of goes downhill from there. So now we're gonna go ahead and set up our little table. This table was used for some party and I don't know why it didn't get wiped down, but it was disgusting. So we're at least getting a satisfying little clean here. And then we will be putting on one of the table covers that comes in the pack. So for this party, I was just gonna make like some pasta, some homemade pizza, and uh, throw like a salad together. But I did wanna provide some other kind of sharky or fishy themed snacks. So I had some goldfish, I had some kind of sea inspired gummies from the Dollar Tree. And then I had some peanut M&Ms, which I kind of am making the excuse that they're like beach balls or something like that so that they can kind of fit our theme. several times it hurts to admit that we're no different i find it hard to commit but you don't even try still i'm better with and without you oh to me I just need this to be real I don't need no fairy tale You don't need a killer Dragon for me So these cupcakes I did freeze because I made them in advance. So that's why it's a little stiff as I'm putting in these cake toppers. But I do think that they turned out really cute. And by the time it was ready to enjoy the cupcakes, they were completely defrosted and just perfect. Why 
So in the set of, you know, the happy birthday sign and the paper supplies, you also get some balloons. You get five balloons with confetti, five white, five light blue, five dark blue, and some ribbon. Now, typically when I make a balloon arch, I use, I wanna say like at least 60 balloons. So this wasn't enough for a full balloon arch. So what I decided to do was to make a group of four, each of one of each color balloon and make a little cluster and then attach them to the top corners of my whiteboard and then hang them above my island, kind of where you would have like a hanging light anyways. So I thought that would kind of be cute. And then uh, one of my balloons popped, so I had three left, and I decided to try another technique that I've seen where you put like a double-sided sticky circle on the top of the balloon, tie some ribbon as you would if you were filling it up with some helium, and then attach it to your ceiling. If you don't wanna make possibly rip off paint or something, I used blue painter's tape and did the sticky side up and then you just stick the balloon to your ceiling and it totally looks like you have like a helium balloon but the nice thing is is it's not going to float around or get caught up in your fan in the living room or something like that it really stays in its place and it just really adds to the feel of the party So for my parties, I try to decorate my glass door using my chalk pens in some way, and I just thought something simple like adding some bubbles would kind of be fun. I did have another activity like available if anyone wanted to do it, and that's making some homemade slime. So I have this clear blue glue from the Dollar Tree, and then I have a borax water mixture. I believe when I made it originally, it was like a quarter teaspoon of borax and a cup of water. And you just mix the glue and this water borax solution together and you can form slime. And you just need a little bit and a little bit goes a long way. So here you see some purple slime that I did in the past and I thought my family might enjoy making some of their own. So I did contemplate dyeing this pink lemonade slightly more red <laughs> to kind of fit the shark theme, but I decided to leave it as it is because I've been seeing so much about red food dye and I just didn't want to even start thinking about that. So I just, you know, I left the pink lemonade as it is and then we were pretty much all set up. Like I said, I was making pizza and pasta, but none of that really fit our theme and it was kind of going to be while everyone was here anyways and not really prepping for the party. So anyways, this wraps up our 
little party prep video. Again, I'd like to thank Wernsai for sponsoring today's video and providing me with all of these really cute decorations and games. And if you want to get any or all of these products, I will put their Amazon links down below in the description box for your convenience. I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. I will be having, we're like almost to the start of our sequence of family parties. <laughs> so my daughter's birthday will be in September and then uh, I'll probably have a gender reveal because I'm newly pregnant. Probably have a gender reveal coming up in October or November. And then we have like Juan's birthday and then mine and Jack's birthday. And then we'll have another baby in the family in like March, um, assuming all goes well. So please subscribe if you guys are new. I'd love to have you stick around and I will catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.